Good morning. Welcome to OldStMary's.com as we celebrate Monday of the second week of Easter. Christ, having risen from the dead, dies now no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us together acknowledge our sins and prepare for these sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have been renewed by paschal remedies, transcending the likeness of our earthly parentage, may be transformed in the image of our heavenly Maker. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported what the chief priests and elders had told them. And when they heard it, they raised their voices to God with one accord and said, Sovereign Lord, maker of heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, you said by the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of our father David, your servant, why the Gentiles rage and the peoples entertain folly. The kings of the earth took their stand and the princes gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. Indeed, they gathered in this city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, Herod and Pontius Pilate, together with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do what your hand and your will had long ago planned to take place. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with all boldness as you stretch forth your hand to heal and signs and wonders are done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. As they prayed, the place where they were gathered shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. The word of the Lord. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Why do the nations rage and the peoples utter folly? The kings of the earth rise up and the princes conspire together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their fetters and cast their bonds from us. Blessed are those who take refuge in the Lord. He who is throned in heaven laughs. The Lord derides them. Then in anger he speaks to them. He terrifies them in his wrath. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. 
Blessed are those who take refuge in the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. Blessed are those who take refuge in the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man once grown old be born again? Surely he cannot re-enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you you must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. So we continue to follow the pathway of the season of Easter. We have shifted a little bit since we've gotten out of the octave and now we're into the more uh, ordinary days of this unordinary time. It has always intrigued me that in the Acts of the Apostles, the tone of the, the Apostles' voices has changed. When they speak after Easter, when they, especially when they speak after Pentecost, it, it, there's, there's a new confidence, there, there's a new style to it. I mean, you can hear it even if you're, you're uh, reading along or you're listening along to someone who's doing the Acts of the Apostles reading. It's definitely different. And I don't think it's just different because it's Luke writing. I think it, it captures, it tries to capture a spirit of what is being proclaimed because the disciples have now become fearless. They are aware that they are going to be hunted and persecuted. They're probably even aware that they could be killed for proclaiming the word. And yet, they have a sole focus. And their sole focus is on doing that, proclaiming the word of God. We heard yesterday in the reading from Acts of the Apostles, the story of the Christian community, the early community that held everything in common, shared everything according to need, that's pretty scary for a capitalist world to think that Christians could decide to just take care of each other and, and we can't mix the politics into, or the economics rather, into uh, the religion of the day and age then or now, except that what the gospel calls us to, what Jesus calls us by this being born of water and spirit, is to recognize each other and to recognize that the love that made him suffer and die and rise, that love is what we inherit from him. That love is what is shared with us when we come together for this Eucharistic meal, which we come forward to without cost. 
except the cost of our own lives, our wanting to be here, our needing to be here with Jesus. And so when the apostles who have now worked on this and, and seen how it worked because of the guidance of the, of the Holy Spirit, when they're able to proclaim with confidence and know what's going on, it becomes very charismatic. It becomes a, an opportunity for people to come and to know Christ in a new way. And it is that same invitation being given to us in our day and age. Maybe our tone needs to change. Maybe our style of, of how we deal with political realities, how we deal with societal realities, how we deal with the realities of our families and our own lives. Is it Jesus first? Is it the understanding of what Christ is giving us through the power of his resurrection, through that ability that transcends all worldliness? It is something that we, like Nicodemus, have to keep showing up to Jesus for and saying, explain it to us. How does this work in our lives? And more importantly, how does it work in our community? What are we not doing to share faith, to share story, or are we just content to do everything the same? This is the challenge Christ poses for us always. Let us raise our prayers to this God who guides us along always. We pray for the church that as we continue to share with others the meaning of the resurrection of Christ, that it will truly infect us all with a good spirit. We pray to the Lord. We pray that the world will learn to overcome obstacles to pathways for people to progress and that will overcome obstacles that keep us from caring for one another. We pray to the Lord. We continue to pray in thanksgiving for all those who have come into the church at Easter time, for those who are now beginning First Communions and other sacraments, including our class coming for confirmation this Sunday. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. for an end to the coronavirus and for good health for all people going forward, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all the particular intentions that people have asked us to pray for, those who uh, pray for us. We pray for people who are at crossroads in their lives today, and we pray for all our dear departed. In a special way today, we remember Bartolome Soledad, we pray to the Lord. We pause a moment to join with our friends who are joining us online. We invite them to raise any prayers they may have in their own home or office. And as they pray, maybe we can listen into our hearts what they may be asking for. For these prayers, we pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, who knows all things, accept the prayers that we have offered, the prayers that are in our hearts, the prayers that are known to you alone. Grant what we need through Christ, our risen Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer, fruit of earth, work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received this wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, receive these offerings of your exalted Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us. He opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, 
and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests, deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Paul, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word in my soul.
O Lord, look with kindness upon your people and grant that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. O Lord, be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Go now to share the love of Christ.